there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Come through of a dog in the Midlands area. Are you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Hello, and welcome to the Dog Rescuers. Today, we've got lots of puppies for you to meet, including these little chaps here who I'm spending the day with. There's also a surprise litter of seven for one inspector, as well as a curious terrier that finds himself in a very tight spot indeed. You just never know what a pup will get up to next. What's that? Coming up. So I could clearly hear dogs inside the address, so I know there's dogs in there now. A two-dog rescue for Inspector Claire Wilson unexpectedly becomes a much bigger one. You've had puppies as well, so you've got a male and a female and seven puppies. Right, you're going to have to hand them all over. Is he actually stuck? <laughs> it's a tight squeeze for tiny pup Ringo and an unusual rescue for Inspector Anthony Joins. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd go and knock some doors. And Angelica Bell hits the road with Hershey Bowl to see what an inspector's life is really like. The call was about a big white dog, which is why I was so shocked when you said, I've got a chihuahua. <laughs> it's late afternoon in County Durham, and Inspector Claire Wilson is on the trail of a couple she dealt with three years ago when they were banned from keeping animals for life. I went in and there were four dogs and they were all different breeds. There was urine and feces everywhere and all four dogs were totally emaciated, like emaciated to the extreme. Despite their ban, Claire has new information to suggest they've got dogs again. What it says is that they've moved towns so that they can have dogs and so that people don't know that they're banned from keeping animals. But obviously somebody knows because they've reported it to us. Before she knocks at the front door, Claire checks the back of the property for any evidence that they're keeping dogs. I can see dog feces. I was the one that removed the previous animals and, and saw what state they were in, so I'm never going to walk away. So I could clearly hear dogs inside the address, so I know there's dogs in there now. I don't think they saw me. They just probably don't answer the door to anybody um, because they're worried that we're going to come knocking. It looks as though Claire will have to try another day until she spots a familiar face, the man who originally received the banning order. Well, I'm actually just about to go to work. Yeah, I realise that, but we've got to deal with the fact that you've got dogs. I know you have. My wife's not in. Yeah, well... I'm, I'm late for work. Well, you're going to have to at least go in, give us the dogs, and then we'll have to come back and interview you another time. Um, but we're going to have to do that now. The owner agrees to let Claire into the house. I know it's upsetting, but we've got to deal with this. Um, 
As it turns out, the man's wife is at home. Hi. So obviously I need to see the dogs. And it's confirmed that despite their ban, there are two adult dogs in the property, a German Shepherd and a crossbreed. So if you've got animals, you're committing an offence. Do you understand that? I've got to interview you both. When somebody is breaching their ban and keeping animals when they're banned from doing so, they don't take them out for a walk because they're worried that someone's going to see them and report them. To keep them in a dark, stuffy, smelly house all the time is causing them to suffer, in my opinion. But it seems two adult dogs isn't all the owners have been hiding. You've had puppies as well. So you've got a male and a female and seven puppies. Right, you're going to have to hand them all over. The couple have no choice but to sign all nine dogs over. By the time Claire's finished interviewing them, it's early evening. They seem very nervous, the mum and dad, um, so I'm going to be getting them to put them in the van so that obviously we stress them out as least as possible. Because they've not been socialised, then they're incredibly frightened when strangers do come in the house or when they're taken out of the house. And that's a massive welfare issue because obviously we've got to remove them and rehome those animals and you're basically starting from scratch. <laughs> The adult dogs are German Shepherd Leo and Mum Gemini, a crossbreed. I'm not going to travel the puppies in with Mum because obviously there's a risk that she'd stand on them in transit. <laughs> so I got up at half six <laughs> and it is now seven o'clock in the evening, yeah. So I am getting a bit tired, but when you've got a van full of animals, you can't just clock off and go home. It's been a long day for Claire, but a great result. The nine dogs will spend the night at a local vet and be examined in the morning. It's been less than 24 hours since Claire Wilson rescued nine dogs, including seven puppies, from a couple who'd been banned from keeping animals. They arrived at the vets late last night, so the four-week-old German Shepherd cross pups are being seen this morning by vet Cecile Spring. Let's listen to your heart. <laughs> As they were being kept hidden by their owners, it's unlikely they've been wormed or vaccinated, which is vitally important for young puppies. But weight-wise, they seem to have been well-fed by their mum, Gemini. There we go. Oh. <laughs> so, we have a nice tricolour. 2.09 kilograms. Let's see, we're a boy. 2.09, yeah. Yeah. He's nice and chubby. It's what we expect at this age. Yeah. Claire is taking photos to support her case against the owners who breached their ban. Heart sounds fine. I know. The lungs sound fine. Each pup is microchipped by injection under the skin at the back of the neck. Brace yourself, little one. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Well done. That's a brave puppy. Chipping is now a legal requirement by the time a puppy is eight weeks old. And it'll be an easy way of us telling which one's which as well. So we don't have to do them now, but they're big enough and it makes sense to do them now. Thankfully, the seven German Shepherd cross pups all look healthy. <laughs> oh, I love it when they yawn. <laughs> Time for your morning nap, isn't it? All these adorable puppies will be named once they reach an animal centre. For now, this one is CW7. Very catchy. Hello. Yeah, Hello. that's the prettiest one. You've got your dad's colours, but no pointy ears. No. There you go. Are you a poser? Take my picture, please. Right, will you pose like that again, please? I could do a selfie. Good boy. <laughs> that is cute. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Thankfully, Claire has got to the puppies in good time, so they won't have the same socialisation issues as their parents. Yeah, yeah that's it. There's a window of time um, when they're quite young puppies where it's really important to get as much socialising done because that's when they're kind of learning all those new experiences. Aren't you lovely? Yeah. 
This one looks like trouble. Just stick your tongue out. <laughs> the more experiences you can give them when they're a young puppy, the, the more socialised and happy and well balanced they will be when they're an adult. Peace. <laughs> oh. Adorable. With a clean bill of health, these sleeping beauties will join their parents at the animal centre. We'll catch up with these little bundles of joy later. But first, we're joining the newest member of the Dog Rescuers team, Angelica Bell. Now, have you ever wondered what it takes to be an RSPCA inspector? Well, today I've been given the chance to go out on shift with one of our regulars to find out for myself what the job is really like. And it's West Midlands-based inspector Hershey Bowl who'll be showing me the ropes today. Hershey. Hi. 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 Good to see you. So what was it that made you want to be an inspector? Just a passion for animal welfare, really, and, you know, wanting to make a difference and wanting to help. Now, one thing I do know is that you've been in the job for 18 years. I have, yes. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It makes me feel quite old. <laughs> no, no. It makes me think you really care about this job. I do, yeah. It's been sort of a dream, really. It's a dream job for me. Now, obviously, there's the dramatic element of the job uh, where you have to save animals, but there's much more to it, isn't it? So most of my job really is about educating the public and giving them any assistance and help that I can along the way. What have we got on the agenda today? So I've got a list of calls that are quite local to here. Yeah. So I thought we'd go and knock some doors and look at some dogs, hopefully. Great. Hershey's one of the charity's 340 inspectors who have a daily list of complaints to investigate, most of which are reported to the 24-hour cruelty hotline. So where are we going to first? So we're going to a complaint about someone that isn't able to look after the dog very well and is struggling, apparently. I could see how, for an owner, if they're in the house, they've got their animal, then all of a sudden you turn up on the door. Oh, yeah. Well, who's contacted them in the first place? And the one thing that people are most sensitive about are children and animals. You accuse them of not looking after those things properly, and that is it. But I think I'm quite good at I can talk my way in and talk my way out of the situation. Yeah. Let the door knocking commence. Hello, darling. What a call about a dog. But there's no dog at this address. So it's definitely not here. Hello, darling. Yeah. What a call about a dog. Is it alright if I just have a quick look at him? Oh, he looks fine. He looks fine, actually. So unfortunately, that's just a. I don't know, it's a bit of a wild goose chase, that one. There's nothing wrong with the dog. Do you often have, like, false alarms? Yes and no. Sometimes people can say something about somebody's dog and they might think it's thin or they might think there's an issue and, actually, there's nothing wrong with it. Inspectors investigate more than 140,000 complaints every year. Hershey and I have a few more on our list. I heard somebody. Remember, I just there. Hello? No, no answer. Come on, be good if someone's in. One of the calls we're following up on is apparently about a large white dog. Hello, darling. Do you have a dog? I've got a tiny chihuahua. A chihuahua? Well, she's definitely not large. Thank you. The call was about a big white dog, which is why I was so shocked when you said, I've got a chihuahua. <laughs> Bye. You have to expect the unexpected in this job. So who knows what we'll find at our next call about a thin Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Hello. Is your mum in or your dad? Hello. But a call about a staffy type dog? You have, a, have you got a dog? Yeah, coming in. Bullseye, there is a staffy here. He's rather adorable and not underweight. It's another false lead. Oh, hello. Look at you. OK. So who have we got here, then? Tyson. So how old is Tyson now? He's 14. 14? He's just living out his last day. Yeah, do you think? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. He's quite happy in himself, really, isn't he? I did notice, and, you know, I can't not say it. Mm, yeah. He's got quite a lump on there. Just keep an eye on his uh, 
testicles, yeah, so to speak, <laughs> and check that they... <laughs> it's the kind of things I have to say, Angelica. I know, I know, I know, I know I... and I'm laughing like a child. Yeah. No, no, but what can, I, what can I do? You can see, as long as they don't change too much in size. It seems an inspector has to cast an eye over every single bit of a dog's body. Well spotted, Hershey. At the end of the day, he's happy and he's sprightly, a good condition yeah. for a dog of that age. Just keep an eye on him, yeah. really. Thank you for letting us come in your home. Well, I've met some gorgeous dogs, and thankfully, so far, we've not had to rescue any. But there's still more calls to follow up on for hard-working Hershey. So I guess anything can happen. We'll see how the rest of Angelica and Hershey's day went later. As we've just seen, being an inspector takes a great deal of patience and dedication. And the same could be said for anyone involved in dog training. In the last show, we met nervous Jack Russell Radley, who was one of 37 dogs signed over to the charity after a council eviction. <laughs> he was completely unsocialised and scared of human contact, which meant finding him a new home was going to be very difficult. <coughs> Scary. Certified clinical animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has been working with Radley for the past two weeks to help manage his fear and stress. And so far, with the help of some fresh chicken treats, she's starting to gain his trust. Lovely. He actually gave me the weight of his chin on my hand then. She's also been working on making stress-free eye contact. Nice. Very good. So I'm getting slightly longer duration. And after a shaky start... All right, all right. Oh, yeah. She's even been able to take him out on a lead. Wow. Thank you. Staying at the front of the kennel, this is an amazing difference in this dog. You can say hi. Oh, good boy. Right, let's go. But there's still the matter of human contact to contend with. To find his forever home, Radley will need to connect with his new owners. Very good boy. It's a new place, isn't it? Come on. Very nice. Good. So I'm beginning to feel a connection. Good. And that's what he needs in order to be able to get a new home, because he has to convince somebody else to fall in love with him, which isn't going to be that difficult, really. No, that'll be the easy bit. But Radley will have to learn to cope with things like having his muddy paws cleaned. And at the moment, he doesn't really like people touching him. Very good boy. Good. So if he allows me to touch him, I'm going to mark it by saying good, and then I'm going to give him a food treat. And I'm just going to see if I can encourage him to have his paws wiped in a very gentle way. Very good boy. Good. So I'm not actually doing a huge amount of wiping to begin with. It's more about just me having contact with his leg and his foot. Good boy. So he did a little jump that says, oh, I don't really like it when people touch me, but I'm going to make it worth his while. Good. No jump that time. Give me a bit of chicken then. It's really important that we actually teach our dogs how to accept being toweled off, being bathed, being groomed, looked at by the vet. For a dog like Radley, who finds human touch really intrusive, we have to teach him that it's a nice thing, uh, not just a thing he has to tolerate. The dog that only weeks ago couldn't bear to be near people is now coping well with being touched. So now Sarah's going to up the ante with a bit of basic training, teaching him to lie down on cue. Involves me doing a tiny bit of yoga. Downward dog. Let's do it with your lead off. I don't think you're going anywhere. It's another sign of Radley's progress. The little escape artist is no longer interested in running off. Sarah has been using the clicker method and some tasty chicken to reward Radley. Good boy. So he's actually learning a new body position. This is new in his repertoire. Clever boy. And if you can't do a yoga position, I cannot do a yoga position. You can easily use a coffee table or lure the dog under a chair just to get the, get the behaviour started. So it's very important if you're going to try this that you don't push on the dog. It's their choice whether they go under the bridge or not. That's all it is. And very quickly we're going to see if we can get rid of needing to have the bridge there at all. I'm going to move my leg out of the way. And see if he stays there, and he does. Really good. For a dog that really likes to escape more than anything else, this is very, very positive. As Radley's learnt how to limbo under Sarah's leg, that's it for today. 
Say hello, Chad. I have high hopes for our next session. I can then do a very easy handover to somebody who might be able to take him home. And I think then very quickly they'll see rapid development, but also how he can make a connection with his new human and build that bond. Things are looking good for Radley. We'll catch up with him later to see if his forever home can become a reality. Also coming up... So Jack's really your companion then, He is now, now he? yes. He's definitely my companion oh. now. Angelica and Hershey meet a Jack Russell that truly is a man's best friend. Without yeah. him, I'd be lost. Really would be lost without him. And Anthony joins, rushes to the rescue of a puppy in a pickle. He's just stuck, isn't he? Yeah. So we will get him out. I promise you we'll get him out. All right, little one. On Merseyside, Inspector Anthony Joins is on his way back to visit a dog he rescued a week ago. The eight-week-old puppy, called Ringo, had got his head trapped in an unexpected place. A drum kit. No, not drum kit. And this was one of those where you just think, is it the 1st of April? You know, is that going to be... Is it real? I think it's the first job of that kind I've had in nine years. Literally, as I pulled up, I got out of the van and I could hear a dog yelping. And then even then, I didn't know what to expect. Is he actually stuck? <laughs> so I've gone round the back of the TV cabinet. <laughs> then it did look a little bit comical. I'll get you out. You just saw this little beautiful teacup Yorkie head surrounded by, you know, a huge piece of wood. Norwegian wood. But don't worry, I, he's just stuck, isn't he? Yeah. So we will get him out. I promise you we'll get him out. All right, little one. But then I was thinking, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to get the fire service out or am I going to give it a go myself? We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets. Because if we can get this off, trying it out on the top one, because that comes out. <sighs> Let me go and see what... I'm not very good at DIY at all either, so I'm not even allowed to loosen my house with a hammer. I'm not going to hurt you. Once again, Anthony's DIY skills have let him down. He could do with a little help from his friends. Or cooking oil. Right. Yeah, cooking oil. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here, if you don't mind. Literally smothered little Ringo completely up all over his head and neck. Don't pull. You all right? I just managed to just do enough to push his head through. Should be through. Is he through? <laughs> right, pass him here. Oh, come here. When I get him out, you know, I didn't realise my voice would go that high pitch, but I was <laughs> just so, I was so made up and happy that he was out. Hey, we got you. Bit more Bee Gees than Beatles. But the plucky little pup seemed to have survived his big adventure unscathed. Last time I seen him, he was basically you know, you look like, a bit like a drowned rat. Anthony is about to see what difference one week and a few soapy baths from owner Verity have made to puppy Ringo. A drum roll, please. You okay? I'm fine, thank you. Honey. I've come to see Ringo. If that's okay with you, oh, I'm sure he'll. I'm really he excited mind. to see him. Oh, I'm sure he would love to see you. Where's that little star, Ringo? I can see him there. Yes. He oh, he's stuck in a hole. Ringo. Hey, buddy. Come say hello. Yes. Yes. Do you remember me? Looks like he does. <laughs> hello. Do you remember me? <laughs> yes. Yes. Look at us. I remember you. Come here. Come here, little one. Hi. <laughs> oh, you look much less oily this time. Hey, how are you doing, little one? Were you stressed, weren't you, my little mate? Yes, you were. He's not stressed now, is he? He's not stressed now, <laughs> are you? Hey, he's just so sweet. Aren't you? It's like he's not even real sometimes when he's like a little teddy bear, isn't he? Oh. To stop this little cub getting in more trouble, Verity's covered the hole he got trapped in. I can see you've 
Yeah, we're back. I've got a, a load of books there now, and yeah. I think it's too heavy for him to push over. Yeah, um, he's not going to get through there, is he? No. Right. <laughs> you stay out of trouble, young man. Stay out of trouble. But seriously, if he does get in trouble, give me a bell. Because it'll be a pleasure. I'll, I'll be straight. I'll be straight back. He is a little legend, that dog. You are. That job and that little puppy is going to be a job that I'll remember for a long time. Well, as we've just seen, puppies can get into all sorts of scrapes if you don't keep a close eye on them. And just like children, they need care and education to turn them into well-balanced grown-ups. An important part of that is socialisation. And to tell me more is welfare specialist Marie Thackbury. So socialisation is a term that we often hear when talking about dogs. What does it really mean? Well, it's, um, it's getting them used to everything they might encounter in life, really. Um, forming habits um, so that they're kind of more accepting of the big wide world. So things like getting used to other species, getting used to children, um, and things as simple as the washing machine, the TV, hairdryer, hoover, um, and get them used to... And what do you say to people who are going to take a puppy home? How should they get their home ready? Um, I guess safety is, is the most important thing, making sure that... Safety um, for the dog. Safety for the not dog. The <laughs> not, not so They're much. <laughs> um, so things like TV <laughs> wires, um, any electrical items and things like that, that making sure they're chew. tucked away. Because puppies will chew all sorts. Right. And they've got their sharp little teeth and they want to get them into things. So making sure they've got appropriate toys to, to use their teeth on. Are they good to have around young children? What do you say to families with young children? Well, it's all about teeth and, and paws at this stage, so it's making sure that the children are trained as well as the puppy. Right. Um, so making sure that this behaviour isn't encouraged by young children. You've got a great children. tolerance for having your hand bitten off, haven't you? You're just you get used talking to talking as if nothing's happening. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to toilet training, is it just a, a matter of thinking, they haven't had a wee for a while, better put them outside? It is indeed. It's just keeping an eye on... What, they, what their habits are. Yeah, looking out for their little cues of when they might need to go to the toilet. So if they're having a little sniff or a little scoot around, um, then taking them to the area that is appropriate. And lots of praise when they do it in the right place. Loads of praise when they do it in the right place. And obviously when they do it in the wrong place, it's just an oopsie moment. We don't pay any attention to it's that. A, they, it's an oopsie moment. It's an oopsie moment. And I suppose it's really tricky when you get puppies like this to find new homes, is it? Don't suppose you get any interest. Um, they were snapped up straight away. They? Yeah. I can't even take one, even if I was allowed. <laughs> Get off the shoelaces. That's a good, good tip. The puppy will undo your shoelaces and then you will fall over. <laughs> Let's look out for that. At Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, it's the fourth and final week of behavioural training for Jack Russell Radley, who arrived at the centre extremely nervous and unsocialised. Good boy. Come in. Good boy. Very good. Come on then. That's it. Animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has one more vital exercise for him to master to help him find a forever home. Oh, very good. Over the past weeks, Radley has learnt that a click from Sarah's clicker means a reward. Oh, that's nice. Good boy. So I love it when a dog first gives me eye contact. I think we're ready for the next stage, and that's to start sharing his loyalties with some other people. Radley's beginning to trust Sarah, but today she wants him to interact with someone new, one of her training team, Joe. He spotted her already. Only by being confident around new people will Radley find someone to take him home. So this is, this is Radley. And, Hi, Radley. Um, as you can tell, he's not the most confident boy in the world, particularly with people that he doesn't know. So I thought if we sit down... Yes. If he then says that you look like a nice, interesting person, looks at you, gives you eye contact, not just me, he does, I'm going to click, and you can give the food treat. Who's this come to say hello to you? So he looked at you, so I click, and you can deliver the food treat, even if it's on the floor. Oh, brown. Lovely. that's really good, because he took it from you. This is how we would potentially do a handover to a prospective owner, because I want him to gaze lovingly at that person to say, yes, you're my human. Radley. Lovely. Wow, Radley's learned his name. The first time I met Radley, he was at the back of the kennel. I mean, it really took, it took us probably about 35 minutes to come within about 10 feet of me. So actually, we're doing really, really well. 
So I can see that he's starting to orient towards you more. And I'm not hurt at all. <laughs> so I think we should try something different now. And actually, as soon as you change the picture for the dog, he needs to relearn that it's the same exercise. So let's see if he can give you eye contact, even with me standing here when we're both standing upright. Just a little tiny change in the environment. Oh, and he looked at you straight away. So I'm going to click and you can give a food treat. Brilliant. And let's just pop the food treats on the chair. That's nice, it's not on you. Oh, he's gazing at you lovingly. Really nice. Exactly. Yay, very good. I think I'm going to hand over the lead as well. Brilliant. Bradley. Playing hard to get now, Radley. Yes, good. And these are the things that are really going to help him get a home because if he sits and looks cute and gazes at someone, who could resist him? Yep, he's mastered the irresistible look for chicken. Well, Joe, I think that went really well. Yeah. I think you did brilliantly, mate. Are you going to be able to cope with sitting on my knee? Are oh, you? Yes, good boy. Very good boy. I've seen a real transformation in Radley. The dog who, right at the beginning, not only couldn't bear to be within 10 foot of me, <coughs> every single thing about him said, I just want to escape from people. I don't want to be near them. To a dog who today has actually managed to meet someone he's never met before, a complete stranger. And when he did, he gave her full eye contact. I'm clicking in for that because he was gazing at you adoringly, and that's what we're after. I'm absolutely certain now that as soon as he finds the right human being to be with, he will make that bond. In fact, he will make that bond very tightly. Once he does that, I see that he's going to have a very bright future. And that's great news for the Animal Centre's deputy manager, Liz Wood. Radley's made great progress with us. He's become a much more confident, friendly dog. But he's now able to come out, go for walks, meet other dogs and meet new handlers quite confidently. So he's going to go on leaps and bounds and then hopefully go on go for adoption and find the perfect family. Bradley certainly deserves a loving new home. Let's hope he gets one soon. Now, let's catch up with Hershey and Angelica. I'm experiencing firsthand what a day's work is like for an RSPCA inspector. Hershey Bowl and I have a long list of complaints to investigate. So it's on to the next one about a dog with matted fur. So this is a call about a dog called Jack, um, and Jack is a Jack Russell. So far today, we've driven for miles, and I'm amazed at the variety of calls we've answered. Oh, the door's already open. Hello. I had a call about your dogs. There's a problem with it? No, he's all right. Is he? OK, what's your dog called? Jack. Jack. Do you mind if I pop in? Hello, darling. Let's have a look. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Oh, look at you. We've had him 14 years because right. he was a rescue dog to start with. Was he? Yeah. Oh, look at him. He's lovely as well. OK. He looks, he looks like he's just had a little shave. No, he's just, to be honest with you, he's getting old now, yeah. so he's going a bit thin in places. And what's he like on his feet, then? Does he walk around much? Cos he's... Yeah, a... Well, he's walks around OK, yeah. yeah. I've got to take him down the vets. OK. Because he's got to have his claws clipped. OK. And he's got to have his booster injection. Oh, right, OK. Jack's definitely well-loved, but my eyes are drawn to owner Paul's cuddly toys. Look how many teddies you've got in this room. <laughs> oh, great. Do you collect these? No, well, the wife died of about a year ago, and oh. she, she was the collector of all the bears. Oh, bless her heart. I can't actually get rid of him because I remember it in Wi-Fi. Exactly. So Jack's really your companion. Yes, he's definitely my companion oh, now. So he was always with me. I'd take him everywhere and he sticks by me through thick and thin, don't you? No. Oh. Without yeah. him, I'd be lost. Really? Oh. Really would be lost without him, yeah. That's what dogs do for you though, isn't it? Yeah, They're your friends, yeah, really. Yeah. Oh. And he's as good as gold. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes. He's very sweet, aren't he? It's another misleading call. Jack's obviously well looked after, just getting on a bit. But I'm happy to have met him and Paul. We Thank like you. him and we like you. Oh, that's all right. That's all right, then. Like it's, always a bo it's always a bonus when we like the yeah, owner. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good day, that Paul. Yes, <laughs> Take care, darling. Even just following Hershey today, you meet people 
who touch you. You know, you can see that for Jack Russell is his life is, you know, everything he lives for. And it's just so beautiful to see. It just makes you feel good, doesn't it? You can literally go, no, no one, no one's in, no one's in, no one's in, no one's in. Then go to a lovely man like that, and he's just so nice. It's a nice part of the day, you know. Hershey's job isn't all about knocking on doors. Sometimes she gets to check up on the dog she's previously rescued. We're off to the kennels to meet one. Onwards and upwards. Three months ago, Trixie was found by a member of the public wandering the streets. Hershey brought her here, Newbrook Farm Animal Centre. She's, she's looking, looking Yeah, she does now, but, you know, initially when I first started her case, she was extremely emaciated, just a bag of bones. You know, she looks incredible now, so... Right, so I think what we'll do is we'll take her for a little walk. Oh, look, now you're interested, aren't you? Are you interested? <laughs> oh, no, come on, Danny. Good girl. Right, come on, then. Come on. Oh, you're keen, aren't you? The busy inspectors don't always get the chance to catch up with dogs they've rescued. Usually, it's only if they're visiting the centre on another job. Right, darling, you're going to have a run. Go on, then. Go on, Danny. Go on. <laughs> Good girl. Whoa. It must feel good, though, to see, see her running yeah, around. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, for me, it's really nice. That's great that you're giving dogs like, like Trixie sort of a new lease of life. It's these moments, actually, that keeps me going. It's knowing that she's going to have a better life with somebody that loves her and, and respects her. Yeah. Yeah, Trixie! Now, Hershey's been an inspector for almost 20 years. And even after all that time, what's been really apparent to me today is that she still has that sheer determination to help so many dogs. It's clearly a tough job, but it's times like this when it makes it all worth it. She's pretty special. Hey! Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Why do you keep going back through my legs? Coming up, we're catching up with one of the pups rescued from the owners who breached their ban in his new home. I must admit, I did fall in love with him at first sight. <laughs> he was just so cute. Earlier, Inspector Claire Wilson rescued seven puppies from a couple who'd been banned from keeping animals for life. <laughs> Oh. I love it when they yard. The tiny German Shepherd cross pups were taken to Hull Animal Centre, where animal care assistant Sarah Johnson helped to wean them onto solid food. You're waking up. Here we go. What's this? Happily, all of these lively pups soon found their forever homes. While their owners pleaded guilty of breaching their lifetime ban and not providing a suitable environment. They received a 16-week suspended prison sentence and the judge made it clear they would be jailed if they got any other animals. Five months on, these bouncing babies have grown and grown. One of them, named Noctis, that's Latin for night, is now living with William Fullerton and his daughters Holly and Hannah. Well, the reason we uh, went to get a dog was my daughter's always wanted one and um, she spent nearly the be better part of ten years convincing me to get one. So we went and had a look at the um, rescue centre dogs. Noctis was just this big bundle of fur. It was Hannah that really wanted to go and get the dog, but I must admit I did, I did fall in love with him at first sight. <laughs> he, he, was just, he was just so cute. It wasn't just Noctis's good looks that attracted them. Noctis seemed to be quite social. He was quite forward. He's really good and really great natured with meeting people and, and other dogs. He's, uh, he's really very, very well socialised and, and, and was actually as a puppy really from the start. It's just a shame that Noctis's two feline siblings aren't so pally. Our cats have, have sort of moved upstairs to keep out of his way and he's up there every chance he gets and sometimes if you catch him and you try and lead him back, he'll, he'll, he'll go along with you and, and, and then you'll sort of let him go and then he'll, he'll pretend he's going to his room and, but then he'll just do a U-turn and go up the stairs again after you. So he's, 
He's learned how to try and trick people. Sneaky. But not his is also learning to be a well-behaved lad. Getting him properly trained was the most important aspect for me. Lie down. Good boy. There were a lot of sort of guides online advocating arm clicker training because it's an instantaneous sort of response. Stay. Good boy. Noctis. Good boy. Noctis is only six months old right now, so I think that having the basic commands down is fairly good. Hannah sort of really took her task very seriously and going out and done all the, the correct research. I forget him to focus on me first. Noctis. Come on, Noctis. Stop, stop Don't let her that. down. Noctis. Noctis. That's better. So he looked at me there, so I clicked and I gave him the treats. So he associates good behaviour with getting nice, tasty treats. Nice work, Hannah. Seems Noctis was rescued in the nick of time. He's definitely on his way to being a well-balanced, happy adult dog. So, did our little friend Radley manage to find someone to take him home? Of course he did. He's a good boy, huh? Wow, what's that? Tiny. He's found his very own humans, Kurt and Isabel Bernhard, and he's loving his new toys. Oh, look at you. Well, he loves playing with his little balls when he's in the right mood. He can throw them himself and catch them, which is, is quite special. Impressive. He has really livened up the house, definitely. The little chap has made that all-important connection with his new family. He loves to be with us and sits on our laps, and he's turned into quite a lap dog. We have such good communication with each other. You know, I'm sure he's thinking about me most of the time and I'm thinking about him, so he's definitely here to stay and he's settled in very well. Brilliant news. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. This is, it's all right. Two Rottweilers abandoned in squalid conditions are in desperate need of help. You know, this is where we find dead dogs in the dresses. Hello. An English bull terrier takes a fancy to Inspector Sam Durrant. Don't hump my leg, though. I don't need that, thanks. Yeah. No! No, I've been... No, no. And Angelica Bell meets a giant breed of dog being trained to save lives at sea. If it wasn't for his being on the sea that day, I think I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, my, my kids would be without a mum.